Hi, and welcome to another Onshape tutorial on how to create a 3D print in place hinge. Obviously, you can use this tutorial to create this hinge in other programs too, like Fusion 360. So let's get right into it. For my example, I have already added two boxes with a distance between them. For this type of print in place hinge, at the both halves will have to lie on the same face. When you have created your boxes, add a sketch on the side of your box. Then create a circle in the middle between the two boxes on the height of the rim of your ha uh, box halves. Because I am using variables, I can just use that to pu uh, put it exactly in the middle. Now create the offset circle around the first one with at least half a millimeter distance and con dimension your first circle. Now create a 45 degree line between your circle and the wall. This will just make your hinge printable without support. And as a little tip, also make the line to the tangent to the circle. Also add another line from the circle to the box just to finish it up. Now, with your first part of the hinge already finished, you can extrude it. Depending on where your hinge will be, this may differ, but in my case, I just put the hinge in the middle. This means an offset of half the box length and using the option symmetric. Using symmetric just means that your object will be in the middle of your extrusion point. Now, when you are finished with that, you can create another sketch on the face of the other box. And with the help of the Use tool, you can already import the lines of your other sketch into your next sketch. This will just make it a bit easier. Now, create another circle, this time offset inwards, again about 0.2 millimeters depends on how good your printer can print. Finish the shape up again with a 45 degree angle to print it easier. The line tangent, so the, don't have to define the length. And then another line from the circle to the box to finish the shape. As a little tip on the side, just always use your shortcuts, for example L for a line. Now the next part, extruding this part of the hinge. You can, in my case, extrude it with an offset so that it will be just before the other hinge. Again, depending on where you want your hinge, this will change. When you are finished with it, and it looks something like this, in my case, or other, if your hinges are in other places, then you can extrude the inner rod of your hinge. This will be the main part that will interlock with the other part. Extrude it so that it will just go through the other part and does not go out of the gray box. If you want, you can now change some parameters, like make the two boxes closer together, if you have modeled it good with good use of variables. And if not, then you're basically finished. Now at the end, you will just have to make sure that when exporting two parts, you select both Export both in one go, and depending on your export process, uh, it will ask you if you want to export it as individual files or as one. I would just use step, then you won't have to worry about that. Now, 
add it as a node at the end. If you go into your slicer, you can see very well how exactly this hinge works. As you can see, thanks to bridging, the 3D printer can print the long rod piece of one of the parts directly in the hinge of the other part. Pretty cool, hmm? isn't it? I hope you liked this video. If yes, please like and subscribe. Bye!